Hey, everybody. For me, it's like go oh, 7.15 at night. Long day work. Long day at work. Stereo police. And uh, I'm just sitting here contemplating this audio note kit. I made a video the, the other night about this and I'm kind of, I was vacillating between the 2.1, 2.1 signature and I finally landed on the 4.1. The 4.1 limited edition with the triple C core output transformers, yeah. I don't know what the 4.1X is. That's thirty-one hundred dollars. I don't have that. I don't have that much money. I'll go with the twenty-six fifty. I don't have that much money either. But I still might buy it. I might end up building another kit. The last kit I built was the Akatika GT one hundred two many moons ago. But hey, I just wanted to. Uh, I think I'm going to do a more detailed video. I, I, I was studying the design. By the way, I'm really jonesing for this thing. There's an old school term, man. I'm jonesing for this thing. I have never... I was studying the design of this tonight. I went through the entire build manual and looked at the schematics they offered and um, looking at how it's designed I studied the, the both digital chips I pulled the uh, spec sheets for the chips I pulled the data sheet the data sheets for the chips I pulled the data sheets for the tubes and I know how it works and I got to say, I have never seen a more analog, digital to analog converter in my life. If that makes any sense to you. Never. I mean, maybe they're out there. But I haven't. I mean, this thing is amazing. And... I'm really glad that that guy who commented the other night, because I was, this was on my, this was, well, I'm not glad because now i got to buy the damn thing. This was kind of on a back burner. I've been looking at this for months now, and this guy who commented the other, and bless you, man, I love you, but this guy who commented the other night sparked my fire again, and I started looking at this thing. You know, and I'm like, wow, this is the most analog DAC I have ever seen. And it's R2R. And, you know, when I when I get back to uh, back to uh, Audiophile University, I'll explain the differences between Delta Sigma and R2R. But basically, Delta Sigma or Sigma Delta, it can go, you know, it can go either way. People call them both, but it's Delta means difference. Sigma means addition uh, or averaging or integrating. Um, Delta Sigma. Is just basically, and I, I know they, they yield better specs, but that's basically a machine just guessing what you want to hear. Whereas R2R is just absolute. Boom. This is the value. And there's just something that's more analog about that. The analogy I would make would be an R2R DAC would be more like a class A amplifier or AB, whereas Delta Sigma is more like a class D, where it chops everything up and has to rebuild it. 
Not a great analogy, but it's the best I can do right now. But um, let me give you a quickie, and I'm going to really, I'm going to make a video where I tell you, I, uh, where I really dig into uh, what makes this special and why I'm jonesing. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I mean, you can get it, uh, you know, that, that Yggdrasil I was going to buy. That shit audio just didn't want to send me. Um, it's an R2R, but, you know, it's it uses... It's got you know, analog devices uh, chip in there, but everything before it and after it is just integrated circuits. Whereas this thing, man, it is just, it's surrounded. The chip it uses is a fantastic chip. And it's just completely surrounded by analog, not only analog, but vacuum tube and transformers. And the chip itself, damn, I wish I could get into it now. I wish I could really tell you why, why this is special. I need to make, I'm going to make a more detailed video, but the chip itself, let me hit pause here so you don't have to watch me phone for a round. Hang on a second. Okay, so just a, a quickie tonight, but your digital signal comes in. And there's only really two major chips in here. Uh, the first chip, I think they're using a Cirrus Logic chip. And then here's the analog devices chip. Uh, the first chip, the Cirrus Logic chip, just uh, unpacks the SPDIF signal which is just a carrier signal. It's like an airplane that carries passengers. And it just, de it just decodes all the stuff and extracts the zeros and ones that is the audio signal. Because all the DAC wants to see, the DAC itself, which is this chip right here, the analog devices R2R, ladder DAC, all it wants to see is a stream of clocked, very accurately clocked zeros and ones that is the digital bit stream that represents the analog signal. So the Cirrus Logic chip um, is going to unpack the SPDIF signal and send it over to the R2R DAC right here. And the R2R DAC, which is uh, the analog device is 1865. And here it is right here. It's, it's an R2R ladder 18-bit uh, excellent DAC. Um, has two outputs. It's got a voltage output right here, and it's got a current output. And you can see the voltage output has to go through an internal op amp to convert the current um, to, to, uh, to a voltage. And I don't like op amps. I'd rather not have that, you know, any sort of op amp in the signal path. So what this kit is doing is it is, we're going up here to the reference, and, and then it is, we're not using the voltage output. We are using the, we are using the current output directly from the DAC, directly from the ladder. So we're bypassing the internal op amp. Excellent, excellent. All right. So we come from the Cirrus Logic chip. We unpack the zeros and ones, which we need to do. We come over to the uh, R2R ladder. We come directly from the R2R ladder right out to the current output. OK. So here's the Cirrus Logic Unpacker. Here's the R2R ladder. Now, what really makes this thing special? 
is we have a current output and all DACs need to convert that current output to a voltage and normally we need to buffer it somehow to send to send this uh, to send this voltage to your next device which is normally a preamp um, so we need to have some nice low output impedance and you know some nice buffer circuitry and normally like in shit audio or in everyone else they're going to use some kind of op amp uh, for me I prefer any amplification of low level signals for me just like my Macintosh preamp I prefer amplifying low level signals with vacuum tubes to me it makes a huge difference so what they're doing here is they're sending the current output they're bypassing the internal op amp they're sending the current output to these transformers right here directly to transformers these are these little can looking things are transformers and they're converting that current to voltage via transformers and then they're sending the voltage to vacuum tubes right here the vacuum tubes will amplify that voltage and then they're sending that voltage and, and, and this is purely class A by the way class A and then they're sending that voltage uh, to these C core transformers right here output transformers excellent beautiful C cores are awesome and then these C core transformers will send that signal right to your outputs and the outputs could be uh, balanced even though it's not really a balanced signal or uh, unbalanced there's two different power supplies uh, there's one power supply for the digital board that's fully regulated and there's another power supply for the analog board that's going to be choke regulated vacuum tube amazing I'm gonna leave it at that I'll talk more about the design later but on paper I can't speak for the sound but on paper this thing is speaking my language it's the again I'll sum it up by saying it's the most analog DAC I've ever seen there may be others out there but I'm not aware of them and at this price and just looking at the quality that I see here I've studied the DAC chip it's fantastic um, it's just speaking every bit of language I've ever, sp it's everything I've ever thought that a DAC should be. That's why I'm jonesing. And I haven't even had a glass of wine yet, which I'm about to do. Stereo Police, I'll follow up in a bit. Ciao, enjoy, I hope you enjoyed this. Over and out.